All right, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's live cooking demonstration. My name is Ryan Smith. I'm the wellness program administrator here at Georgia State University's Employee Development and Wellness Services. By trade, I'm a registered dietitian, so I'm always on the lookout for healthy and easy recipes that we can work into our day-to-day -day lives. A couple quick things before we get started. We are making use of the WebEx platform today. We're gonna to be recording today's session so that you can view it again at a later time or share with a colleague who may not have been able to attend today. We upload most of our recordings to our EDWS YouTube page where we have past cooking demonstrations, stretch breaks, yoga, meditation, and more. So we encourage you to check that out and we'll be sure to share that information in some follow-up communications. Throughout today's presentation, if you run into any issues, uh, audio problems, video problems, let us know in the chat box. I'm joined today by my colleague, Cheryl Johnson Ransaw, who will be monitoring the chat to help out with any of those issues. So if you do have some technical problems, make sure to send your message to all panelists. That will make sure that Cheryl can also see it and help troubleshoot anything that may pop up. Also, during today's presentation, if you've got questions about the recipe, comments, anything like that, please be sure to put those in the chat and we'll review them at the end of the presentation. So, with all that being said, today we are going to be making broccoli cheddar quinoa bites. Now, this is a recipe I've made before. I last made it about a year ago, uh, but when I found it, it quickly became part of my regular rotation because I enjoy it so much. It is great for a breakfast or even a snack or maybe something to complement your lunch. I think it's pretty flexible, but it's really, really easy to make, and we're going to walk you through it today. In terms of equipment, you're going to need a cutting board, a couple mixing bowls here, a medium and a small size one will work fine. We are gonna use the stovetop to cook some quinoa, which I'll talk about in just a moment. And then we're going to use the oven. So the first thing you'll wanna do is preheat your oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. And I've actually got a batch of this already cooking. So I'm gonna turn my oven off right now because it's already fully cooked. The timer just went off right before this started, but this is a good opportunity for you to preheat that oven to 350. And now I've gone ahead and pre-cooked the quinoa, but let's talk about how much we're going to use and, and what quinoa is, because I know it's not super familiar for everybody. So this is quinoa. It is a super healthy whole grain food. The thing I can compare it to most easily would be rice. It is something that's dried. You add some water to it. You boil it, cook it on a stovetop like that. And, uh, it's a great thing to work into salads, into wraps. Um, it can be its own side. Super, super flexible and very healthy. And the reason it's healthy is you might be able to see on the package up there, it says 100% whole grain. So when we choose whole grain options, that's like brown rice instead of white rice, whole wheat bread instead of white bread, whole grain pasta instead of white pasta, things like that, we're getting extra fiber, we're getting extra protein, and we're getting some extra B vitamins and some minerals. So all those things together mean that when we're choosing our starch or our carbohydrate source for a recipe, if we pick one that's a little richer in nutrients, we do a lot of good for our body. Now, when you go to buy quinoa at the store, it's usually next to things like rice um, at Kroger or Publix. That's where I found it is next to the rice in the aisle. Walmart will carry it. You can find it at most grocery stores these days. You'll find a couple different kinds. Um, you can find like the white kind, there's a black, a red, you can get a blend of all of them. It really doesn't matter. Nutritionally, they're all great. For this recipe, if you want it to look closer to the picture at the beginning, I do recommend getting the white quinoa because it's going to uh, show the cheese a little more and make it look a little more flavorful. But I've made it before with the tri quinoa blend with a couple different colors and it still tastes excellent. It just won't be quite as close of a visual match. So there are cooking instructions on any quinoa package, but you're gonna start with half a cup of dry quinoa and you're gonna cook that on a stovetop according to the package instructions. I've gone ahead and done that. When you cook quinoa, it tends to triple in volume. So half a cup dry, which is what we start with, will turn into about one and a half cups cooked. A Little different from rice in terms of how that ratio works. Um, so I've cooked it here and I can show you what it looks like. When you've cooked it, it ends up kind of looking like rice. It's sort of this fluffy grain. Uh, Texture-wise, it's a little bit heartier than rice, I think. Um, and it's got, it's hard to describe, it's almost like a nutty flavor to it. I really, really enjoy it. If you haven't tried it before, I encourage you to give it a shot. So we've gone ahead and cooked that quinoa, and we're gonna set that to the side for now because we're gonna incorporate that in the recipe. But 
when you start cooking, it's best to get that going a little ahead of time so you can add it in with everything else. So let's talk through our other ingredients. I'd say the star of our show today is probably broccoli. It is broccoli cheddar quinoa bites after all. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna need one cup of broccoli florets. So we're mainly aiming for the guys up top. You're able to chop the stalk into smaller pieces if you'd like, but for this recipe, I like to stick to the tops when I can. I've gone ahead and rinsed this, gotten it ready to cut into. And the best way to get florets is going to be to kind of eyeball it, see how high the stock goes, and cut as high up as you possibly can. We're going to set the stock to the side, fully edible, so if you want, you can chop this up, maybe use it for something else. But when you do that, you essentially break the broccoli down into a bunch of smaller pieces of broccoli, right? This is just like a miniature tree, like we were just looking at at a larger size. And from there, we're going to repeat that process, cutting as high up on the stock as we can, and that will break that down into these tiny little florets, which are perfect because we're going to make this in a muffin tin. So we sort of want these tiny little bite-sized pieces. So repeating that process, and you should be able to, on certain pieces, maybe just pull away with your hands. So if you want to stop cutting, you can just rip it apart like that, and that'll work just fine. But as far as piece size go, we do want them to be fairly small. Since we're going to be putting them in a muffin tin, we want there to be little bites of broccoli, but we don't want to have like a full size piece like that in there. It's going to be too much and we want it to cook nice and evenly when we put it in the oven. So you can continue tearing this up or cutting it however you prefer to do it. And we're looking for one cup. I like to really pack it full because what makes this recipe nutritious or part of what makes it nutritious is having that broccoli in there. So if you even want to do a little bit extra, uh, it'll be good for you. So feel free to go a little over the cup if you want to. Um, you can see we're filling this up pretty fast, but I want to get a little more mileage out of this stock of broccoli. So I'm going to continue cutting and packing some of these pieces in there. Now, I think we're all pretty familiar with broccoli in terms of it being a very, very healthy food. Uh, it's rich in a number of different vitamins and minerals. It's got some vitamin C in it to help with our immune system. A lot of other good things to promote just functions in the body. And it's a good source of fiber. So is our quinoa. And why I like to talk about fiber is it does so many things for our body. It helps us keep a healthier blood sugar. So when we eat a meal and our blood sugar would go up, fiber helps make that a little bit more gradual rather than giving us a spike where we fall back down. Like if you ever get a, you know, a sugar rush or something like that, you can feel really energetic and then you crash. Fiber gives us sustained energy. So we feel good over a long period of time. It can help us, so I'm gonna actually put this into a medium-sized bowl here because we're gonna mix a couple things together. Fiber can also help us with uh, weight maintenance because we can feel full and satisfied on less food. So that's a big benefit if you're trying to lose weight or maintain a healthy weight. It is also very good for just keeping us regular. So going to the restroom, things like that, you want everything to flow well, fiber helps with that. And then finally, it can help promote a healthy cholesterol level too. So if you've ever got some higher cholesterol levels, Fiber can actually bind to that not so healthy cholesterol that's in the body and help you get rid of it. So, so many benefits. That's why we're always talking about it. So we've got that in here. Next, what we're gonna do is we are gonna go ahead and add our quinoa to it. Let me grab a spatula real quick. We're gonna add our quinoa into there with the broccoli. So I like to use kind of a rubber spatula or a rubber spoon. Just like if you cook rice, sometimes you'll get some pieces that'll stick to the side of the pot or the pan. Uh, and I want to make sure that we can scrape those off and get as much of the quinoa in there as possible. One thing I didn't mention about quinoa that I think makes it stand out a little bit from something like rice is in addition to having the fiber and the B vitamins that I talked about, it is actually a pretty high source of protein compared to other grains. Um, compared to some other protein foods like chicken, it's not a high source, but rice may only have one to two grams of protein in a serving, where quinoa has about six. So that's a pretty big difference overall. So we'll put that in there. Next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna add some cheese. Of course, I promised broccoli cheddar quinoa bites, so we've gotta get that cheese in there. We're gonna be using three quarters of a cup of just shredded cheddar cheese, or if you wanna use like a different blend, like a Mexican blend, you're welcome to do that as well. So three quarters of a cup, that's gonna give us that fun yellow color. It's also gonna give us, of course, a lot of flavor and add some protein to things as well. Next, we're gonna add our seasonings. So we are going to do half a teaspoon of garlic powder. We're gonna do half a teaspoon of baking powder, a quarter teaspoon of onion powder, 
a quarter teaspoon of black pepper and a quarter teaspoon of salt. I see there's a little baking powder stuck there, so we'll get that out. There we go. Okay. Now there is one more ingredient that we're going to add to this mixture, and that's going to be uh, an egg. We're going to lightly beat the egg and then add it in. This is going to help with that baking process. So anytime I do this on camera, I always get a little nervous that I'm going to have a bad egg crack and get shell in there. We'll see how it goes. Okay, that was a clean one. I'm always thankful when that happens. All right, so we got our egg there. And since we're going to be lightly beating it, I'm just going to use a fork. And what we mean when we say lightly beat it is we want the yolk to incorporate in with the rest of the egg. Um, but we don't want to beat it too much that it starts to get kind of like fluffy almost. So break that yolk up, have it mix in with everything else, but you don't need to beat it super hard. If you've got a whisk, of course, you can use that. It'll probably be a little more effective than a fork, but sometimes I like to use a fork because I know not everyone may have a whisk handy at home. Okay, I'll show you what, uh, we'll see if I can show you. I don't want to pour it everywhere, but you can see I've sort of divided that yolk up into the rest of it. So it's nice and evenly dispersed, and we are just going to pour that over our quinoa, broccoli, cheese, and those other seasonings. Okay, now using a spoon, uh, I'm just going to mix this around. The quinoa is going to soak up some of that egg, which will add some flavor, but more importantly, it's going to help us with the baking process. We're going to put it in a muffin tin, like I mentioned, and it's important that we have the egg in there and the baking powder in there because it helps things stick together. It helps them have properties whenever they bake so that it can sort of rise and solidify a little bit. So mix it around evenly. We also have the seasoning and the cheese, which we want to distribute so that every bite is going to be equally tasty. So I mentioned that I think this is a good breakfast dish, uh, which it might seem a little strange to have quinoa for breakfast at first, but these end up turning into these little like egg muffin bite style things, which I know places like Starbucks and some other restaurants sell like that. So I think they're super convenient for making these and then being able to have, you know, grab two in the morning, take them with you, maybe add a piece of fruit or something to balance it out a little bit too. So that's why I consider them a really good breakfast option. But I mentioned you can definitely work them in in other places too. So once you've got that thoroughly mixed, what we're going to do uh, is the next step is going to be to prepare a muffin tin. So just a standard 12 cup muffin tin will work. This is actually only going to produce eight muffins. Um, so you can use a 12 muffin tin. You're just going to prepare eight of those things. And how we're going to do that is we're going to use a little bit of cooking spray. This is a canola oil based one, but you're welcome to use whatever you prefer and just lightly grease the muffin tin. And then we will spoon these into each muffin tin, and then we'll put it in the oven and bake it for 30 minutes at that 350 degrees Fahrenheit that your oven should be preheated to. Now, quick disclaimer, uh, I only have one muffin tin, which creates a bit of a problem because I just finished baking with the other one. So I'll go ahead and pull the finished ones out. I'm kind of spoiling the end here real quick, but then I'll be able to show you what that process looks like putting it in the tin. So bear with me for just one moment. Oh, and I can, uh, I love the smell of these. The cheese with the garlic, such a good combination. So we'll pull this out here and then I'm going to go ahead and serve these ahead of time. Like I said, we're, we're kind of breaking up the order here. I know normally I like to pull out the recipe at the very end for a big reveal. Um, and what I recommend doing, because hopefully you've sprayed these well and they aren't going to stick to the pan, but you can use a knife or a spoon, something to sort of scrape the sides and make sure that they can pull apart. Once they're finished baking, it's actually recommended that you keep these uh, out on like a wire rack and let them cool for about 20 minutes. While they cool, that'll allow them to solidify a little more and it should make it easier to remove. But just for the sake of time today, we're gonna go ahead and just use the spoon method and sort of separate these from the tin and pop them out so that we can show you how preparing the rest of them goes. So there's one of them. You can see I've pulled it out. It's got that nice browning on the edges and we'll just move that over here to the side and repeat that process. Some of them are falling apart a little bit because they haven't cooled fully. So I'm going to leave those guys behind and move the ones that are ready to go. Oh yeah, that one's good. 
So let's talk about the nutrition of these while I'm doing this. I mentioned that we're getting protein from a couple sources. The quinoa is a higher protein grain. The cheese is adding some protein in there. So that gives us a nice start to the day if we're doing this for breakfast. We have that boost of protein. The healthy carbohydrates from the quinoa will give you some sustained energy that can last you through till lunch, which I know that's really important. We want a breakfast that makes us feel good and doesn't have us crashing or getting hungry again really shortly thereafter. So the quinoa is great for that. I mentioned the nutrients that the broccoli contributes and how helpful that is for just supporting our body's health overall. Left some broccoli behind. All right, and then we'll get this last guy out. And then we can prepare the rest of those. Okay, so now what we'll do is those instructions I mentioned earlier, you'll get your cooking spray. We're gonna lightly grease eight of these. Okay. And then you are going to just spoon this mixture in and try to divide it up as evenly as possible. My goal whenever I do this is to make sure I get a little bit of broccoli in each one. I usually start with a, a smaller scoop, just like a spoonful, like so. And then I can always come back and add more to it later to balance it out, so. And you'll use the back of the spoon to sort of press down on it to make it compact. If you can fill the muffin tin up more, it'll help them have a better shape that you can then enjoy once they're done cooking. And so you can see this recipe is really simple. There's a little bit of prep by cutting up the broccoli and beating the egg, and then the rest of it is just mixing it in a bowl, popping it in the oven, and then you are good to go. So we'll finish spreading these out. And then the last step we'll do, once we've got these all packed in there nicely, is we'll give each one a quick cooking spray on the top of it. That's gonna help it crisp a little bit and brown. Uh, which will make it look nice and also make the texture more pleasant. I'm trying to get every last little piece here. Okay. Well, let me actually make sure, press down firmly with that spoon, they're nice and tight and packed in. That'll help them stay together a little better. One of those guys that I pulled out started falling apart a little bit, probably because I didn't pack him as well as the other ones did. Then get that cooking spray and we're just gonna do a quick, okay. And then we will set that back in the oven. And again, it's gonna be at 350 degrees and you're gonna bake for 30 minutes. Now the, I'll show you these here. So we can take a look at them. Some of these definitely came out a little better than the others based on how long they had to cool. Uh, you can see here how crispy that one is on the side. That's exactly what we're looking for. Um, some of them were falling apart a little bit just because I didn't give them the opportunity to cool like they normally would. So key step, and it's in the instructions when we send out the recipe, after you bake for 30 minutes, take that muffin tin out. If you've got a wire rack that you can prop it up on, set it there and let it cool for about 20 so that they can form their shape, and then when you pull them out, you'll have an easier time than I did today. Uh, but for the sake of the cooking demonstration, I wanted to show you all what they look like. So that's really it. If you are prepared and you've got the ingredients, this is such an easy meal prep where you are able to make this recipe in like 15 minutes of work, and then you set it in the oven for 30. It'll make eight muffins, and a serving size is gonna be about two muffins. Now, if you are a more active person or perhaps a larger person, you may want to up that serving size, maybe do three, or like I mentioned, you can pair it with a piece of fruit or something else uh, to help add a little bit more to it. Two muffin bites are gonna be about 200 calories. So that's definitely on the smaller side, which is why I recommend pairing with a piece of fruit, um, some almonds, some other little snacky thing that can help complement it nicely but you'll get 10 grams of protein per two bites, which is a great way to start that day off. You're also getting broccoli in with breakfast, which most people don't get vegetables in with breakfast and most of us don't eat enough vegetables. So if you're able to get something like this early in the morning uh, and have that boost of vegetables to the day, you're off to an excellent start. For storage, keep them in the refrigerator. You can keep them for up to four days. So if you meal prep on a Sunday, you're good all the way through Thursday. What I like to do personally is pop them in like a toaster oven to reheat them because it helps them get crispy again, which I really enjoy. But you can also just microwave them for uh, about 30 seconds or so, and that'll get them nice and warm and you can enjoy them that way, though they will be a little softer after being in the fridge. 
which is why I prefer that stovetop method. So those are the broccoli cheddar quinoa bites. Super simple to make. I've made these several times over the last year just for myself because I enjoy them and I've had a lot of friends try them and like them too. So if you're looking for an easy morning meal prep or even just a snack to do somewhere in the day, this is a great way to pack in some nutrition. So let's take a look at the chat real quick because I see we've got quite a few comments. Um, Oh, uh, this is a question. Do you mind telling me where you got that black bowl that you're putting the cooked bites in? I used to have a similar set, but they've broken over the years and I've had trouble finding wire bowls like that. Unfortunately, uh, I'm in the same boat. My roommate and I got this bowl a long time ago, years ago, and we really like how it looks because I think it's just, I think those black bowls make food really pop because you can see the colors in them. And they have that wider, uh, shallower bowl there. We have not been able to find more. So I wish uh, I could tell you where to find some right now, but we're on the hunt too. So if you find them, let me know, because I would love to get more of them. I think they're a very nice dish. Uh, every other bowl I find is like a standard cereal bowl shape. So I'm sorry, I don't have a better answer for you there. Um, here's a question. Would adding red onion work with this recipe? Absolutely. So we added some onion powder into the recipe, which gives it a little bit of that flavor. But if you wanted to do red onions, white onions, really, onions are pretty flexible and you wanted to dice those up finely and mix them in instead of the onion powder. Truthfully, I think that would actually make this taste even better. It's just a little bit more work on the front end and we we're trying to keep it simple with the dried seasoning. But yeah, if you want to do some fresh onion, um, I could see doing like uh, green onion in here would work pretty well too if you chop that up finely. There's a lot of ways to add that little extra oomph to it if you want to. Similarly, um, anytime I have something that's like a cheddar thing, I like spice with it. So I could see doing some diced jalapenos in this would be really, really tasty too. Might be a little too much of a kick for some people in the morning, but I know I would enjoy it. Um, it seems that broccoli stems get tough so often. Do you have recommendations for using the broccoli stalks? Great question, because we can see, I mean, I'm going fast just for the sake of the demonstration and trying to get through it, but we can see there is like half that uh, broccoli crown left over. Um, what I usually do with broccoli stalks like this is at some point throughout the week, I'm going to eat a salad. I, I really enjoy salads and, you know, you could kind of just throw in anything to those. I will often chop the broccoli stalk, stalks up kind of finely, almost into if you've ever, you know, chopped carrots before and you get the tiny little discs like that. I'll chop the broccoli stalks up like that so they're small, crunchy pieces. And then I will just top that on top of a salad that I have at some point in the week. Because with a little dressing mixed in with the greens, it's super tasty. And this part of the broccoli is also very, very nutritious. It's not just the tops. Just for visuals and sometimes for cooking things like these, the focus is always on the florets. So that's my recommendation. Chop them up finely, almost like you would with some carrots. Have that, put it on top of a salad or if there's another dish you can think of, and you can just enjoy them that way. Or there's no reason you can't chop up the remaining stalks and just cook that broccoli. You could stir fry it, microwave it, however you want to cook it. Still just as healthy, just as edible. But I agree that a lot of cooking shows, recipes, they're like, just throw away the stock, but half the broccoli here. So that's what I usually do. You'll see at the end of the demonstration, once the camera's off, I'm trying to salvage as much of the vegetables as I can because I don't want to contribute to too much food waste. Great question. Um, can you freeze them? So the place I got this recipe from says that you can freeze them though I have not experimented with it. The thing with freezing things like this is always going to be that texture when you thaw them. So I mentioned I really like them to be crispy. It's why I like to use a toaster oven to reheat them whenever I'm enjoying them again. Freezing them and thawing them, of course, is going to change the texture and everything. Uh, the recipe, original source of it, mentioned it's doable, but I haven't experimented with it, so I can't speak to it. What I always encourage people to do is if you want to gamble on something like that or you want to see how it works, make a batch. Enjoy the ones that you can, and maybe just try freezing one or two, um, even just for a day or two, and then thaw it and see how it affects the texture. So you know if you'd feel comfortable freezing a full batch in the future before you might accidentally you know, waste a batch if you end up not liking them too much. So I always recommend freezing a small portion and seeing how it works out whenever you thaw it. Here's a question, can you use them as a side dish? Definitely. So I mentioned quinoa is something that's flexible, You know, having a grain where you've got rice, on the side or quinoa on the side. If you wanted to make these, as, serve them as a side dish or maybe even a little appetizer, instead of having like a bread basket, you've got some healthy little quinoa bites that people can pull from and enjoy before the meal. 
that would be a great application for them. They're super flexible. They're really just savory and delicious. So whenever you feel like there's a time where you'd want that, be it breakfast, lunch, dinner, it's a good way to pull in this recipe. Can you incorporate another vegetable with the broccoli? Yeah, if you've seen um, egg muffin 10 bites like this before, spinach is really common, bell peppers are common, and I mentioned jalapenos earlier because I like a little bit of spice, but I think spinach and bell pepper would be a natural fit for this. Anything that you would uh, put in an omelet, so mushrooms, tomatoes, would work pretty well in here. So you could just uh, either lower the broccoli amount or just maybe you make a slightly bigger batch, add that into the main mixture, mix it with the quinoa and the cheese and everything else, and then you can move that to the muffin tin. So if it, if it works in an omelet, it should work just fine in this. Uh, does everything hold together well? When I eat leftover quinoa, it seems so crumbly, wondering if it will fall apart when you bite into it. That's a great question. Uh, I don't always eat things on camera whenever we do these, but I mentioned these ones are a little bit more crumbly because I pulled them out pretty fast, but you can see like it, they hold together fairly well. The sides get very crispy because they're in contact with the tin, the little bit of cooking spray helps give them almost like an air fryer texture on the end. I will be honest with you though, when you bite into them, that first bite, it's probably gonna crumble a little bit. So having a plate or something underneath you or just enjoying them with a fork might be the right move. Uh, but they'll hold together well enough to pick them up and move them around. But that first bite, you're probably going to have some crumbles happen. Just being realistic, be prepared with a napkin or maybe have a fork to help clean things up at the end. Um, okay, I think that looks like all the questions. I'm going to scroll again real quick, make sure I didn't miss anything. Uh, we are going to share the recipe, so you're going to get a copy of it and a follow-up email. Um, like I said, this one's super simple and easy. I highly recommend giving it a try. If you're someone who watches the program and some of the recipes, maybe look intimidating. This one's really, really easy. So I promise you'll be able to nail it on your first go. Just make sure to let them cool for 20 minutes before you pop them out. Um, that'll help them stick together even better with a nicer texture. So thank you everyone for attending today. We do events like this about twice a month, the cooking demonstrations, but we also have a nice array of other well-being programs from um, guided meditation. We've got our snack and share support group, We've got a book club coming up that we're excited about. That'll be next week. And if you want to stay up to date on these events, we've got a couple options. All of our events are on the GSU web calendar, so you can find us there. Most of our offerings get uploaded to the USG events calendar. So if you're used to going there, you can find us on the USG Wellbeing events page. Uh, and finally, the best way to keep up to date with what we're doing is to be on our mailing list. If you aren't already, you can email me directly at rsmith250 at gsu.edu. Cheryl just put that in the chat. Thank you, Cheryl. Um, and we'll get you on that mailing list. We send out an email usually every Monday or Tuesday to let people know everything we're working on that week so you can join us and see more events like this. Speaking of, we've got a guide meditation to wrap up the week tomorrow. That's going to be at noon online. You can find it on both the G GSU calendar and the USG calendar. It's about a 30-minute guided meditation, nice way to end the week and go into a relaxing weekend. And I see there was a question about the YouTube channel. So when we send out the follow-up communication, uh, there will be a link for that. But I believe, I tell you what, give me just a second. Um, if you stay on after I turn my camera off, I'm going to pull a link up and I'll put, paste it in the chat here real quick. You should be able to just Google EDWS YouTube and it should pop up, but I'll put it in the chat in just a moment and we'll send it in a follow-up communication as well. So thank you everyone for joining today. We hope you enjoyed the presentation and we hope to see you again soon at another one of our events. Take care.